Good afternoon and welcome to the On Record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Robert Gratton and joining me today is Jay Gillum, the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Director for Natural Bridge. Good morning, Jay. How are you? Good morning, Robert. Um, so, Jay, you're involved in soil and water conservation and preservation. If you could just briefly tell me why this is important and how it affects our daily lives in the county. Well, um, I decided to run for the office of director of the Soil and Water Conservation District uh, about 10 years ago, and I've been very gratified by the job since then. And that, uh, a Soil and Water Conservation District is a local uh, body politic that uh, administers federal and state dollars to uh, promote uh, mainly agricultural best management practices and helping farmers uh, use practices that are uh, environmentally sound uh, and so that's our primary purpose and I find it very gratifying here in Rockbridge County to uh, work with our district personnel in order to achieve those goals. Great. What are some of the issues that your uh, department has dealt with recently? Well. Uh, just recently, uh, we have, uh, for the very first time, dealt with a couple of streams in Rockbridge County uh, that are officially declared impaired. The state agencies have decided, based on data that they've collected, uh, that the Hayes Creek watershed and the Little Calf Pasture River, which are two separate watersheds in the uh, northwest part of the county, are, uh, don't meet state water quality standards. And so my Soil and Water District and its staff and its directors have uh, been working with the state agencies to try to uh, encourage uh, cooperative behavior by people who live in those watersheds to uh, improve the water quality. And we've had some success. When you say impaired, what exactly does that mean for people in the county? Well, in the state of Virginia has a set of water quality standards and each and those standards might be for for example pH or dissolved oxygen or certain levels of toxic materials but they can also be for uh, the fact that these streams don't meet don't have a healthy enough biological community living in them fishes and aquatic macroinvertebrates and in the case of uh, uh, the little calf pasture, that's the problem, is uh, there's a lake, Lake Merriweather, that uh, has uh, developed an awful lot of sediment, has been deposited in it over the years, 40 years that it's been in existence, and some of that sediment comes out and smothers the aquatic community. So for that reason, the little calf pasture doesn't meet state water quality standards. In the Hayes Creek watershed, it doesn't meet the standards because uh, there's too much bacteria. And mm -hmm. for that reason, it's not safe for children to play in the stream and so forth. Most of the bacteria in all likelihood comes from farm animals uh, cooling themselves off and waiting in the streams. How is your department dealing with, with the bacteria in the river? It sounds like to make this go away, you have to talk to farmers. Well, it's pretty simple, actually, uh, or it should be pretty simple. If, we, if there are currently a certain number of cattle that, uh, that hang around in the stream and they deposit their manure in the stream, uh, if we can get a certain number of those cattle to be excluded by fences and so forth and help the farmers build alternative watering sources so that the cows don't actually stay in the stream, uh, then in all likelihood we'll be able to reduce the amount of bacteria by reducing the number of cows and that's, uh, that's what we're shooting for. There are other uh, inputs such as people who live near the uh, streams might have a septic system for their wastewater from the house and that septic system might not be functioning properly, so bacteria can get into the stream that way. So we're studying these different alternatives and trying to encourage everybody to do a better job. Great, and you talked about how the bacteria means that people can't safely 
play in the stream mm -hmm. or the water couldn't be used. But with the aquatic environment that you mentioned in the little calf pasture river, mm -hmm. how does that affect the, the health of the stream or what it can be used for? Well, uh, it's just, it's simply the fact that it, it, it's not a human health threat like mm -hmm. bacteria might be. Uh, but uh, a stream has to be allowed to uh, have the right amount of uh, aquatic macroinvertebrates and fish to live in it or it uh, begins to affect the riparian mammals and birds and so forth. And so uh, there's a method of measuring how much life, how healthy life is in a stream and the uh, state biologists study that and when they find that there's not enough uh, diversity of organisms in the stream then they make a decision to uh, put the stream on the impaired list which uh, is a very bureaucratic way to do it but it, uh, it's mm -hmm. the only way we have. Do the uh, little, little Cash Pasture River and uh, the other one meet up or in the Maury River? Yes. As a matter of fact the Mari begins at the western end of Goshen Pass. Uh, when the little calf pasture comes together and has a confluence with the calf pasture, so that's, that sometimes it's really confusing to people, mm -hmm. but the calf pasture comes down from the village of Goshen and the little calf pasture comes down from the village of Craigsville and they meet right about 100 yards upstream of the swinging bridge at the west end of Goshen Pass. And that's the beginning of the Mari River. And from that point to the point where it uh, dumps into the James River down at Glasgow is 47 miles. And it's entirely within Rockbridge County. And one of the most interesting things that I've found is that the watershed or the drainage basin of the Mari River is Rockbridge County. Rockbridge County is based on a on a, on a watershed, which is un, it's unique, in Virginia at least. I've never found any other community that's, that's uh, also uh, based on a watershed. Great. And given the amount of, uh, I guess, responsibility that Rockbridge County has because the river exists entirely in the county, how does uh, this play into the larger picture of the whole Chesapeake Bay watershed? Well, we're the headwaters of the Chesapeake Bay right here. Mm. And uh, all, there's a boat. 15 major tributaries, Cars Creek, Buffalo Creek, Hayes Creek, uh, Guys Run, uh, their South River, they're all uh, tributaries of the Mari, and the Mari is a tributary of the James, and the James is a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay. So whatever goes on up here, whether it's sediment, toxic, or nutrient pollution, it ends up in the Chesapeake Bay. And that same is true for many, many other tributaries and so all the degrading uh, effects end up in the Chesapeake Bay so it's when you look at it that way it's not hard to uh, understand why the bay is in such a poor shape. Mm -hmm. How does Rockbridge County compare it to other localities with our water quality? I'm glad to say that I think the Rockbridge that the Mari River and Rockbridge County is far superior to most watersheds in um, mo most counties in Virginia. We have lots of good clean water and uh, it's not perfect but it is uh, exceptional and it's much better than most communities in Virginia. Great, that's good to hear. So what are some of the biggest challenges that your department is facing looking forward? Well, I think I would give you the answer that everybody else will give you is money. They keep cutting our funding uh, to the point that we're really having a hard time uh, paying our two uh, staff members, there's an administrative assistant in our office and a, and a field technician, and uh, we haven't given them a, p a pay raise in three years, and they've made more cuts this year, so I don't know whether we're going to be able to even keep both of them on. That's the biggest uh, and also in Virginia, we have a new governor every four years. Uh, the new governor always, in my experience, changes everything. So in terms of policy, mm -hmm. and that's a big, big uh, challenge also, because when they change the policy, we've got to change the policy and try to make it work. 
How does that policy change affect the actions that you're taking? Or what is the goal that you're working towards now currently? Well, the goal is cooperation. And in my opinion, that's the, that's the only solution to, make, to most natural resource protection uh, efforts is, is people just got to cooperate with each other uh, in order to solve these problems. And that is not necessarily the policy of every politician. A lot of people think that if you've got enough regulatory authority and enough money that they can solve the problem from Richmond. Mm. But I firmly believe that you cannot solve these problems without meaningful cooperation of interested citizens. Great. And is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Well, I going? think that there's tremendous opportunities for college students such as yourself to get involved with these uh, potential solutions. Uh, I think uh, we've, we've had some, my Soil and Water Conservation District has had some excellent uh, cooperative partnerships with your uh, students from WNL and VMI, but mostly from WNL. And uh, Laura Henry Stone is a, is a visiting professor who has been very, very important in the Hayes Creek uh, uh, restoration project. And so, and Robert Robert Humston is also a very, uh, uh, has, has worked with us and helped us. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. Is there anything else uh, that you'd like to tell us about how we can get involved in the Rockbridge County? Well, just get in touch with me. If, and, and I think I've pointed you in some directions and I'll be hope we'll continue to. Uh, for example, the McCormick Farm mm -hmm. is, is a story that I've suggested to you and I hope we can work together that on that in the future as well. Great. And how do these farms uh, affect the water quality? Well, agriculture always has mm. uh, some negative effect on water quality. Um, and you know, it's mostly the best, the best example is having the cows in the creek muddling up the uh, the bottom of the stream and letting sediment and nutrient get into the stream. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are other issues as well when farmers have to fertilize their fields. Uh, yeah. If they put too much fertilizer on, that washes into the into the stream and causes nutrient pollution. Mm -hmm. But well, uh, Thank I you. can go on and on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm Robert Gratton, and this has been the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. Thank you.